What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing um, a building and review of um, the Tree.com uh, 4x2x2. Alright guys, so if you're anything like me, um, you need a 120-gallon enclosure or a 4x2x2 but they're super expensive, $500 or more. I was trying to find one somewhere else, and I ended up stumbling across one on Chewy.com, and it's by Symptom, and i never heard of that brand before, but it's regularly th regularly $330, and right now, at least, it's on sale for $273, so it's basically at the same point, maybe even a little cheaper than the Dubia.com uh, enclosure, and it's actually in stock, so... I figured I'd grab a couple of them and I do a building and review on them. All right guys, so it looks like it comes with some instructions. Uh, we'll see how good those are in a second. Nothing on the back, so just single sided. It looks pretty simple enough. You've got a mallet. So it's got a harder plastic end and then a softer rubber end. Um, we'll see. That's probably just for hammering in all the different corners. So it comes with, I'm assuming these are side vents or actually. Oh, that's for cables, I believe. Yeah, so that's for cables. So um, if you're going to have a snake in this enclosure, then you wouldn't want them to be able to escape through a big hole. So this is that you can feed your cables through, uh, hook them, and you can close it to have however many you need. Um, but that way, um, your animal's not going to escape. So that's that's definitely good to have. There's a couple of these rods. Not quite sure what those go to, but I guess we'll find out in a second. So it looks like these bars, I was wondering what they were earlier. They are supports for the screen mesh. I can only assume that these go over the corners. Looks like they got a bag of hardware. Um, I don't see a screwdriver. So if it doesn't come with that, that's that's gonna be uh, annoying. But um, yeah, that's a bag of hardware. This looks like it might be an optional substrate barrier, not 100% sure. We'll see once we look at the instructions more in depth. This is pretty clearly the screen top. Oh, so it looks like the, for some reason they taped the acrylic to the side panels. Maybe just to keep it from sliding around and getting damaged. And finally, you've got the two, well, the bottom and the back. All right, guys, so the instructions say that the very first step is to peel all of the protective sheets off of the plastic, and I'll do the acrylic later once we need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This feels like it's just going to tear at any moment. Um, not the highest quality protective material. It's a pain to get off. <laughs> This is gonna take forever because I gotta do um, this side, this side. Um, I have a second one of these panels, and then I have I have two gigantic panels. So this will be a while. Only a second for you guys. So. So you're gonna want to take two of those. Um, so you're going to want to take one of those two big panels and um, probably whichever one is scratched up the most, if they're scratched, um, this one's going to be the bottom, so nobody's going to see it. Um, but you're going to want to take that and basically you're going to build the railing system around it. It looks like you're basically just going to stick these around it and uh, these are going to be the corners. Now it says to make sure that um, this hole right here if you look, it says to make sure that those holes are facing down, and I think that's so you can stack these, but I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's what it's for. It 
it looks like it's going to be easier if you build a u-shape and then slide the uh, piece in so that's what i'm going to do and i'm just i'm trying to be careful and not break this And then with your last piece, you're going to want to um, put these corner connectors on that first and then slide it onto the end. I'll show you in a second. All right. So just like this, um, I don't know if I can get that in frame, but basically with these corner connectors already on, you can come over and you should be able to pretty much wiggle on there. So now we're basically going to um, create the skeleton um, using these pieces and uh, whichever size the front, um, right now it doesn't matter, but these pieces that have this nub sticking out, you're going to want to make sure that these sit like, like so because you're going to have um, a bracket going across the center there for the doors. So just make sure that though. These two are are right across from each other. I'm going to put them here, put the opposite one like so. And I'm not going to fully push them down yet because I believe this, this fancy little piece right here uh, goes there. All right, so this piece that has the logo, this really long piece, that goes right on top and just make sure that the side that has this um, double uh, rail system, that goes on top because that's where your uh, doors are going to be set. So so after you get um, those two in, you should be good to hammer these down. All right, and then you just want to take these other two and hammer those in. It doesn't really matter which one you wear. Once you have all those corners in, uh, now's the time to put the walls in. These are the two panels. And as you can see, one of these has um, a hole and the other one doesn't. Whichever side you want your cables coming out of, uh, so basically wherever the closest outlet is, I guess, um, that's the side that you're going to want to put this. Um, so it doesn't really matter which side, but I'm going to have stuff on the right side, so I'm going to put the piece with the hole over here. And these are, I believe, two feet by two feet, so they are square, so it shouldn't matter which way you put them in. So this is the screw for um, the brackets to put the supports in uh, for the screen lid. And I tried screwing in with just a screwdriver, and it looks like that's not going to be enough. Um, the holes are super shallow, and it looks like they want you to drill into the PVC, so I'm going to go grab a drill. Um, just pop those in. You'll see there are holes right where they want you to drill them, so it's super easy. Um, so, yeah, I'll get back to you once I'm done with that. All right, guys, so I got them screwed in, and it actually came in with two extra screws, which is very nice because they're extremely tiny and easy to lose. I didn't end up losing any of them, so I have two extra screws, but it's definitely a nice thing to add. All right, so I know I did that slightly out of order, but now I'm going to put this back piece in. And it says you don't have to do the uh, acrylic doors yet but I think I'm gonna do that so the first thing you're gonna want to do is take the protective peeling off and then you're gonna want to screw in uh, these handles into them so that's what I'm gonna do right now alright guys so I got the very first um, acrylic door done uh, it seems pretty easy actually the um, acrylic had the protection on it 
a lot easier to take off than the um, PVC and the handle was really easy to screw in. It was slightly misaligned so it's a little bit tight but um, I mean it went on. Um, the only thing is it came with this protection on the end and I'm not sure if that's just how it came shipped or if it's supposed to stay on there. Uh, none of the other sides had it so I'm going to assume it's supposed to stay on there so I'm going to keep it on there um, basically until I get everything set up and then if I have to take it off I have to take it off but it's on both of them so I think it might need to stay on there. So these rubber pieces weren't working so I guess that's just how they were shipped. Um, they were only on one side so um, they must they might have some purpose but um, it works fine um, without them so I'm just gonna toss those to the side and um, now it's just time to put the top on and remember make sure that um, the side that either says front or if it doesn't say front the side that has um, two railings make sure that that is the side that goes in front oh one more thing so the final thing is to just um, screw this into the side um, let me see I don't know if, uh, all right, there we go. if you guys can see that hole right there, um, that's where this screws into. So all you're going to do is unscrew this, all right. and you're going to want to have this part on the outside um, because when you want to access it, it's just easier to access it from the outside than getting uh, inside the cage. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up. All right, guys, so what are my final thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I think that, I think the price is right. I think it's definitely, it's definitely a good buy. I would personally buy another one. I haven't been able to check out the dubia.com enclosures, um, which I think are, they're a little bit cheaper, um, and those might be better, but they're always out of stock, so um, that's annoying. Um, but as far as sturdiness, it wobbles, but, um, I mean, once you have substrate in there, and um, this isn't going to be for a snake. A snake would be able to push itself um, out of there. There's no lock. That's another thing. There's no lock. So, um, for something like a bearded dragon, or what I'm going to use it for, um, a blue tongue skink, this is going to be perfectly fine. Um, but, yeah, definitely this is not a habitat for snakes. Also, um, this is a pretty shallow substrate barrier. Um, Pascal, who's my blue tongue skink, he really should have like four to six inches, and this is like maybe th three, maybe four. Um, I'll have to go in and measure that. But um, yeah, at some point I might have to put in, um, we'll see, I'll fill it with substrate, and maybe I'll put a divider where there's a shallow area for him to dig in and a deep area, but um, I might have to get some PVC from Lowe's or something and cut a piece to put there. I mean, other than that, um, for something like a bearded dragon, if you put a substrate barrier for something like a blue duck sink, this is gonna be um, perfect, and it's way cheaper than anything else. So, um, would I say it's worth it? Um, yeah, definitely. I would much rather um, get this than pay, you know, 500 bucks for something a little bit nicer. And the nice thing about this is because it's cheap, um, if something happens to it, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, you know, if you want to have the lighting on the inside rather than over the screen mesh, which I would recommend for the UV light because um, UV doesn't penetrate through mesh very well, I'm probably going to screw hold, uh, screw some screws through um, or maybe put some bolts through and hang it on the inside so that way it can be um, closer to him and he can get all the benefits. Um, but yeah, um, because it's, you know, cheaper, um, who cares if you drill into the screen to add some lights. Um, this isn't something that I would recommend for a high-end collection, but, you know, if you're starting out and you need to upgrade one of your reptiles' enclosures, this is perfect.